the um, Brazilian variant, the UK variant, the South African variant, what do we need to know about all this? Well, you know, um, keeping an eye on all of these, I mean, you know, right now, if you think about these variants as a whole, uh, the areas that are, that are developing these mutations are around the spike protein, something that we've been talking about for some time. The antibodies that are generated by these vaccines, they kind of, they kind of provide a blanket over the spike protein. So hopefully they're going to continue to work. If there's more and more mutations or they're occurring in other areas uh, further away from the spike protein, that may be a problem. But I want to talk about the Brazil one for a second, and this is uh, called the P1 uh, variant. Uh, it, it came from an area called Manaus in Brazil, and the reason this is significant is because it was believed that just about everyone there had been infected at some point last year with the coronavirus. Then they saw a resurgence of cases, and that's sort of what uh, led to the investigation of saying what's, what's going on here. When they looked at these new cases, they found that some of them were of this new variant. So there were people who were getting infected uh, again, reinfections, and there was increased transmissibility. And now, as you, as you point out, there is one patient, at least, in Minnesota who had returned from Brazil, uh, got uh, uh, um, tested on January 9th, so some time ago, and that has now come back as being positive for this variant. So the variant is moving. That's not a surprise. Uh, it does appear to be more transmissible, more, more contagious. Uh, that is also not a surprise. Uh, these mutations allow these, these viruses to enter cells more easily. But at least for the time being, it does seem to be protected uh, by against the, the uh, existing vaccines. But we're going to have to keep an eye on that. If you listen closely to even Dr. Anthony Fauci, you're starting to hear language about the variants, that it's something that is worrisome, that it is the unknown. It is the possibility <clears throat> that these variants could outpace where we are in vaccines that have doctors worried at this point. What are you hearing? Yeah, I, I think there's, there's two, two concerns. Uh, just because something is more transmissible while not being more lethal, which is what appears to be the case with these variants, that doesn't mean it's not a problem. Because if you start to do the math and look at something that is far more transmissible, 50% more transmissible, that means that you know casual encounters, things that people got away with in terms of not spreading the virus are gonna become more problematic. I mean, if you've been diligent, you're wearing your mask, you should still be okay. But for people who've been a little bit more careless, they are gonna have less wiggle room to, to possibly uh, get infected. The other thing is that vulnerable populations are more likely to become infected. In fact, if you do the math, within a month, if you had a more transmissible virus versus a more lethal virus, the more transmissible one would still lead to more deaths because it's more likely to affect vulnerable populations. That's the first issue. And the second issue, again, is, is these mutations overall in terms of the vaccine. The, 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 the interesting thing is you don't want just the number of vaccines to increase. You do want the pace of vaccinations to increase because the more the virus spreads, the more mutations it accumulates. Many of them are not gonna be big deal mutations. But if it does start to accumulate mutations that make it more resistant to the vaccine, that's another problem. That, that's, that's the race that uh, Dr. Fauci was sort of talking about.